Cool. So what I want to do now is walk you through how I would previs a typical scene and show you how I use the camera tool script um, to find angles and that sort of thing. So to start, um, I've created a very short scene here. We have a two wall set. You can see these are built in 4x8 four four V flats. And we have a really simple dressing. We have a bed, two dressers, that sort of thing. So we hit play. And our actress walks in. She pauses. She looks at her watch. She's going to keep walking right over to the bed. She sits down. She hears something, and then boom, she turns around, there's someone at the door, she pulls out a gun or something like that. So in this first phase, we're just looking for angles. Um, usually I would be with the director or with the creative or someone, someone who has an idea already about how this, how this scene should look. So, you know, in our virtual world here with our little camera, we can, we can kind of viewfinder around like we would on set, you know, like if we were watching a rehearsal, we can be like, oh, well, let's watch it from here. Um, so let's start creating cameras. So we have the script here. We have the Alexa already up. Um, I'm going to pick a focal length like 32. Uh, we're going to do it from viewport. And we're not going to use the aim, and we'll do real world scale, and we'll create the camera. So we have this wide. So that's great. So this, the whole scene can play out here. It's pretty safe to start there. Um, you might even start shooting it that way. So at this point, we can pause and go play by play. So the next shot we're going to need is something something here, something like a medium. We can, we can really see our character at this point. This is kind of like her first, her first close-up. And the shot looks like, like this. She checks her watch, and then she walks out. Great. So we'll create that camera. That's a buy. Um, next, she goes to the bed. And let's see what's a what would make sense for this. Maybe we do something like something like this. Um, show off her legs a little bit, and we create. She walks and she sits down. So, um, when I created the scene, I didn't really know what was going on. I was just making it up, but it, it turned out to be kind of like a spy thing, kind of like James Bond world. So, I was thinking that it would be cool to have a shot like this. Um, we were, we're kind of someone's point of view through the door and we get the idea that someone, someone's watching her so let's create this camera you know and again this, this part of the process is all about just you know saying yes and just just making shots um, they don't cost anything it's quick doesn't take time and later we'll edit them all together and see which ones make the most sense so here we have a close-up um, my thought was that we wouldn't see her eyes it's always kind of um, creepy or something, and you would see part of the door, so we kind of foreshadow that something's happening, so I'll create this camera here, and I think last, I mean, we could do a, a lot of shots, you know, we could do this overhead if this was buying you anything, um, but I think lastly, we want to really show off this, this turning around action, and her, her pose is kind of cool, right, so we want to do something like, like that, create camera, so... Um, if we turn our cameras back on, you can see the cameras that we've created so far. We have the wide here, this is the close-up, this is her transition to walking, this is th through there, and that was pretty quick. Um, the script keeps all the cameras to like to spec. We changed our focal lengths as we needed to um, pretty quick. So the second part of this process is to actually edit everything. Um, Sounds like a lot of work, but once you get used to the workflow, it's pretty quick. And really, this is the power of Prevision. And without editing it, you're really not, you're really not doing it right. So, what we're going to do here is load up the the camera sequencer, which is basically um, like any nonlinear editing program like Avid or Premiere. So, what we're going to do is create a clip for each one of these cameras, just like importing footage. I should probably write a script or something that automates this part. Though it's not. It's not all that difficult. Um, so we have all the clips loaded like we do, like we would in an editing program. So on the top is the wide shot, and we see that action. Okay. I'm going to also turn off the cameras because we don't need to see those for this. So, so the scene starts. She walks in. And we're going to cut on the action, and her hand's coming up. And we're going to end this clip there. Next. So she goes here, let's turn the gate on. She looks at her watch, very good. And she starts to walk out. 
Maybe right there. Okay. So, next we have this shot. Turn the gate on. And maybe we take it from here. Do a little temporal cheat here. She kind of walks out. Walks across the frame. And she starts to sit. Cut out there. And again, another temporal cheat. We're back at the point of view shot, and this is another match on action. Like that. She, she sits. It's going to be a quick one. Then we cut to her sitting again. I don't know if you'd still be matching that action. Probably not. She's probably already there. Like that. Let's turn the gate on this camera. She sits. There's the face. And I'm going to clean this up after. Um, and she starts to spin. Starts to spin. Like that. And then the last shot. So she, this is the big payoff. She's starting to spin here. Yeah, some of that. And we'll trim this down. And so we finished our, our rough in of the scene. So let's hit play real quick, watch it back. She walks in, boom, close up, do a little walking, doing some sitting, sitting, point of view, boom, she turns around. Pretty cool. So, so the last part of this process is to go back and kind of fix what's wrong and what's not working here. Um, it doesn't really have to do with the script anymore, but I just want to clean up this sequence. So we have the wide shot. She walks in. This is fine. This is fine. It's kind of boring. You know, we had camera movements, but that's that's really for like kind of another video. Um, she sits down. That's fine, too. You know what? So for, so for this shot, for, for instance, um, say we don't like this shot because I don't. Um, we're going to change it to a 75. A little bit longer on the lens, so she's a little bit bigger in frame. A little sneaky camera view here. There, that's cool. That makes sense. That makes more sense. Great. She sits down. This shot feels really weird. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to back up. See, we're on a 32 here. Um, and you know, it's it's not even so much about her face in this one. So I want to go to something like a 75. And what I want to do is just focus on her mouth, like that, kind of her expression, and then the door. So this kind of gives away that, that something's happening out there. Maybe there's an audio cue, and we would hear her, you would hear it, and you kind of see her reacting, and then she starts to spin, and then boom, that shot. Um, things like this in real life... It's it's it takes more time to explore, but say here, say we wanted to do something like really actually like crank style, we wanted to go to like an 18, and we wanted to feel like really kind of really feel actiony, um, you know, actiony means wide and close and fisheye maybe. And what if we went like full bananas and we did eight millimeter? You know, what does this what does this look like? You know, maybe. She's popped Super Saiyan mode, and now she's in, in Super 8 millimeters. So maybe maybe it's too much. Maybe we go to 12. You know, you can really play with the the distortion. And maybe it's something like this. And let's see how this looks. Yeah, it's kind of kind of kind of a jarring cut. So, so these are the tweaks I've done. Uh, let's hit play and just watch it back really quickly. Um, just the wind, the close. She comes and sits down. Boom. 